or minerals used for, meaning in our everyday life. So if we just go into, I just want to share one thing that uh, I woke up 2 a.m. this morning and I actually saw this, if you can. Yeah. This was the view that you see outside today, but this was 2 a.m. last night, so this was really beautiful. Just want to show you. Well, let's start. Um, so let's start with the basics. What is a mineral? Uh, to be a mineral, it has to um, um, fulfill these five criteria. It has to be naturally occurring, it has to be inorganic, and it has to be solid. It has to have a chemical formula, and it has to have a crystalline structure to even be called a mineral. And I'll go into these one by one. If you first look at the criteria one, naturally occurring, um, that just means that it's made by natural geological processes in the earth. If you look at this picture, you can see there are mainly two uh, reasons. The one is the, um, the elements that are dissolved in liquid, so then the mineral formed by evaporation, when the water, water evaporates, the mineral is formed or it's from uh, lava or magma that's cooling down and then the minerals building up as it cools down. If we first look at the lava, if we look here, you can see floating lava on the right picture. And if you look at these two pictures, if you look at the one at the, to the right with the man standing near the very large crystal, um, when it has time to cool, when it has a long time to cool down, it will have time to build, a, to build really large crystals compared to the picture on the left, where you can see this one has had a shorter cooling time and the crystals are, are also um, tinier then. I actually have a little example to show you. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah. yeah, if you look at this, you can see the crystals on this side are much larger than the crystals on this side. So here maybe you could guess that the, the side that has that had more time to cool has been this one with the larger crystals because they have had time to build up. And if you look at the other way that the minerals um, are formed, if we look at uh, just a simple glass of water that has different elements in, and here you see the water evaporates and the crystals start to collect together in a pattern, and the result is this, uh, if any, any minerals or crystals. And if you look at these two pictures, these are just, these are just examples of uh, minerals. If you look at the, in a cave, for example, where water is dripping from the ceiling, and then there will be stones, the drip stones building from the ceiling, and also where the water is dripping on the floor, the stones will be building up. These are called stalagmites and stalactites. And if you look at the, the next picture, you can see a sea, a beach, where the sea is evaporating, and the beach is full of salt crystals. So these are all examples of naturally occurring crystals. So if we go to min uh, criteria two, uh, meaning they are inorganic, that just means that they are not made by any living organism, it's not made by plants or animals. And if you look, there is some mystery. If you look at this uh, cone, for example, here's an example of now. Let's see if you can see anything, I'm not sure. An example of coal. Uh, coal is made from dead organisms. So that's not a mineral, but if you squeeze coal for a very, very long time, extremely long time, uh, only then only the carbon will be left, and it's called graphite. And in graphite, you can see there, that is actually a mineral. And you will see it here. So that's a little bit of a mystery regarding criteria two. And then if we go to number three, it has to be a solid, meaning that uh, you have to be able to put it in your hand or see it or touch it or something. It cannot be a liquid, not like water, and it's not a gas like the air around us. It has to be a solid. And criteria two, four is the chemical formula. That means that every mineral has a specific chemical formula that tells them uh, what elements they consist of. Some minerals have uh, multiple elements, like calcite, for example, that has both calcium and um, carbon and oxygen in. And then there are some, uh, some minerals that only have one, like uh, copper, silver, sulfur. 
and salt is, for example, the one that contains two, sodium and chloride. And here is the periodic table that shows us all of the elements that, are, that we know about now. And if we look at this, for example, the first uh, upper crystal here is salt. And you can see it contains of NAT, LR sodium, and chloride. And here you can find the NAT, the sodium, I mean. And here you can find the chloride. And if you look at the pyrite, I also have an example here of the pyrite, so you can see it. Um, like this. Can you see it? This is sort of what they call the fool's. Uh, fool's gold before when they were looking for gold and they found this they were really happy for a little bit and then they found out that it wasn't real gold it was just fool's gold called pyrite and you can see that it contains of iron and uh, sulfur uh, and you can find them here and there on the periodic table so if we go to the last criteria that's the fifth criteria uh, that it has to have a crystalline structure that just means that the minerals have a structure that's arranged in a regular geometrical pattern. And then the pattern will repeat itself and the crystal and the mineral will grow by that. So if you look at, again, maybe you can look at salt, that has the sodium and the chloride. And here you can see the um, geometrical pattern. You can see that um, if you look at every green, you can see it has a blue attached to it all the way around. And the blue has a green attached to it all the way around. So it's repeated. And then different kinds of minerals have different um, geometrical, uh, how do you say, form. And these are the forms. They can be cubic, tetragonal, triclinic, orthorhombic, hexagonal, monoclinic, and triclinal. And these are used for recognizing what kind of mineral you're looking at. And then if you zoom a little bit more out, we are, then you can see an actual crystal. I think I'll just show you these, um, these seven forms here, just examples. So if you look at the first one, uh, for example, fluorite is cubic, and wolfenite is a tetragonal um, shape. And that's the wolfenite is actually what they use for uh, computer screens before, not anymore, but before. And amazonite is uh, three clinic, three clinic form. And then we have um, I just have to move this one, uh, tantanite there. That's orthorhombic, and an example for trigonal is rhodochrosite, and azurite is an example for monoclinic form, and then the last one is an emerald, which has a hexagonal form. And to recognize minerals, we actually use uh, these criteria. We uh, to identify them actually. We look at how hard they are. If it, you know, if you can break it with a nail, or you have to use something much stronger. Uh, and then we look at the luster, if they are shiny or if they are sort of dull. And we look at the color, red, purple, green, blue. And then we look at the streak. And the streak means we have a porcelain plate where we can sort of uh, draw with the crystal. And the streak it makes on the porcelain plate, it's different color and that can also help us identify the mineral. And then also the, how heavy they are, the gravity or how. Uh, and the last one is how they break. If they have, um, if they break sharp, or if they are more rounded, and that's also an, an a, way, a, a way to identify the mineral. Okay, so we'll go a little bit further, just to see if um, any of your students are awake, if they're there. Uh, do they remember how many criteria there are? If you have an answer, you can write it in the chat, maybe. Yes, there are exactly five criteria. Uh, and maybe you could also name one or two criteria. Yes. All right. These are the five. Naturally occurring, inorganic, solid, has to have a chemical formula, and a crystalline structure. Very good. Um, okay, so then we'll look a little bit at when we use minerals in our everyday life. Uh, let's start where we start our everyday. Let's start in the bathroom, where we brush our teeth every morning. If we first look at the toothpaste that we use, it contains fluorite, which is a mineral, and it's crushed and then it's used in the toothpaste. So actually you are brushing your teeth with uh, crushed rock, if you will look at it like, like that. And um, if we look further, we can see that the talc talc, which is also a mineral that you can see here, 
also made to powder and then it's used in, for example, foundation and other makeup we use, some of us use every day. And the last one, for example, Mika, which is a, it can be a quite beautiful, it's, it's a sort of a shiny mineral and it's very often used in makeup. And it can both be used as uh, to give sort of a shimmer to the makeup. It can also be used to color, for example, lipstick in many different red colors. And they use different kinds of mega rock. And then if we go into the office and look a little bit, if we start with a lamp, for example, um, if we look at the brass, we can see that it contains copper. And if you can see here, you can see the, the rock, how it looks actually, and then you can see how what is formed through pipes and everything and then it's used in the brass for example. The same with the sink, you can see it here and it's formed to another shape and then it's used in the brass. And then we can look at the wiring, it's again copper and you can see it's uh, used here, the conductor, because it's a cheap conductor for example. And the last one we'll look at is the bulb, uh, that could contain, sometimes contain quartz because it has a high melting temperature, so that's very reasonable to look to use instead of the to use for the glass of the bulb. So if we look um, in the periodic table again, we can see where we can find the copper, the zinc, and the silicon, and the oxygen. And then if we go a little further and look at the computer instead, uh, we, we start with the electronic inside. Uh, that contains a lot of different minerals, but I just chose a few, and it contains, for example, silver, and it contains quartz, and it contains gold, very often. And um, there. And if you look at the monitor, they use um, an element called infium. That's what they use so it can help touch screen computers and phones and everything. And if we look at where it's found in the periodic table, you can see the silver, the silicon, the oxygen, the gold is there, AU, and you will find the indium there. So a few more examples of how minerals are used. If you want really high quality speakers, they use pure silver as conductors. And they are also starting to use uh, silver coating as a really thin layer to protect, for example, keyboards and, and, and other stuff against uh, bacteria and germs and things like that. And here you can see example of the silver. I actually have an example, uh, a little bit weird one, but it's called the Silver Strings. Uh, let's see if you can see it. So this is actually naturally silver. It looks a bit gray and dull, but it could be shaped into something pretty, I guess. And if you look at, for example, gold, it's also used a lot in electronics, as you saw before. But it's also used in the medicine industry, for example, in uh, for many things. And uh, for example, it's used as nanoparticles to, in treatment against cancer. And if you look, if you think back on the New Year's Eve where we had all the fireworks, the colors of the fireworks are also from uh, different kinds of minerals. If you look here, you can, for example, get the red color from an element called strontium, which is in a mineral called celestite that has the formula SRSO4. And the blue color can come from copper, and the green color can come from an element called barium, that's in the barite mineral, which the formula is uh, BASO4. And then one more that we use a lot is aluminum. Uh, for example, aluminum is used in cars and airplanes, and we use a lot of it in the world today. And it's found, for example, in the rock bauxite and in the mineral gypsum. So these are just examples of where you can find them. Okay, so time for one more question. Do you remember um, one of the co uh, common minerals used in electronics? Yes, examples. One good example that's used in electronics. Very good. Uh, and some other elements that are used are also silver and cobalt is also one, yes. Quartz, gold is also. There are lots of minerals used in, in electronics, so that's very good. Thank you. Uh, and now I think uh, we will look a little bit inside our bodies. And I've just chosen a few. We also have lots of minerals we have used for, but these are four that we have chosen out. Uh, if we start with the mineral calcite, where you can see that the formula is CaCO3. And uh, that's, there you will find calcium in, 
and that's used to build uh, our strong bones and teeth. And to get the calcite, we, we get it from different kinds of food, but for example, we get it from milk and kale and broccoli. So that's good food and drink to have every day to build our bones better. And the next one will be the potassium that you see here. Um, potassium, yeah. And that's um, uh, the potassium controls the elect electric activity of our heart. And it also makes us grow, uh, have a normal growth. And to get uh, potassium, uh, we have to eat, for example, fish and potatoes and tomatoes also, and, and beef maybe, and lots of other food gives us also potassium. The next one is the iron, it's also vital for us. Uh, and, the white, and the iron we need to, for our cells and our bodies to function normally. And to get the iron, we have to eat some fish, shellfish, maybe lobster, and different kinds of fish. And we can eat uh, spinach also, and broccoli, and lots of other foods also. And the last one I have chosen is uh, the magnesium. And the magnesium, we need to produce energy. And we get it from eating, for example, nuts, dark chocolate, different kinds of grains. So as, as you see here, we need lots of minerals just to function every day. To survive, we need the minerals inside also. And in everything we use, our phones, our cars, houses, everything we use minerals for. So just to sum it all up, what we've been through today, uh, we learned that there are five criteria for defining a mineral. It has to be naturally occurring, so not made it's, it's made by natural geological processes, and it's inorganic, not made by living organisms, and it has to be a solid, so it's not a gas, and not water, and not flowing like water, and it has to have a chemical formula that says which element the uh, mineral contains that it's consisting of, and some only have one. And then the last thing is the crystalline structure. It has to have a geometric uh, pattern, which is repeated. And we also learned that we use them all around us every day. All the electronics we use, and especially the electronics, and the growing demand after the latest technology, we always have to have the newest phone and the newest computer and everything. That leads, this leads to an extreme usage of different kinds of minerals. And if we look a little bit ahead, this can actually uh, lead to a shortage of supply of the most used minerals. So we have to be a little bit careful. And the last thing uh, we learned today is that we even need the minerals in our body to survive every day. I think this was the lesson for today. And thanks very much for listening. I hope you, hope you learned something and I hope you got something out of the lesson.